Men in a boat up the river they will go On a sailing spree where the wind is free We present Leslie Phillips as George Kenneth Horn as Harris And Hubert Gregg as Jay In Jerome K. Jerome's Three Men in a Boat the adaptation and the music and lyrics are by Hubert Gray. Three men in a boat. What? To say nothing of the dog. Three men in a boat that discover haunts remote. Like the numbers boat in the days of all it's a game for a Because he is seeing a new panorama unfurled. The place is overlooked, the town will see to just above the town. And as for a Londoner, used to a Londoner view of the city, he's hurled suddenly into a seventh-ish heaven and land by Queen Mary. My name is Jerome. Harris calls me Jay, and so does George. I don't want you to get the impression from all that clippity-clop that I'm forever jogging about London in a hansom. I'd like to be, but this being the year 1888 and life being the fast-moving exercise it is, I can't afford it. The truth is I take a hansom just every so often to cheer myself up. Today I felt I needed it. I was under the weather. George was too. In the evening, over a glass or more of port, Harris said he wasn't himself, and George said that must be an improvement. Settle down, Montmorency. George, put the port this way, will you? All right. You were saying, Harris? Well, I, I really don't know why it should be, but I, I feel such extraordinary fits of giddiness come over me at times. I hardly know what I'm doing. The same with me, Harris. I have fits of giddiness. I hardly know what I'm doing. Nothing odd about that, George, if I may say so. Hand me one of those spills, will you? My pipe's gone out. What's your trouble, Jay? I have a liver. Ah, so have I. I've done terrible things to it. It's a wonder we're still on speaking terms. No, Harris. Jay means there's something wrong with his. How do you know, Jay? I've been reading a liver pill advertisement. It tells you the symptoms. I've got them all. I think Montmorency's got a few of them. We need a rest, that's what. Ah. Rest and complete change. The overstrain upon our brains has produced a general depression throughout the system. Change of scene and the absence of necessity for thought will restore the mental equilibrium. George, for heaven's sake, stop talking like that black sheep cousin of yours. The one that goes down on the charge sheet as a medical student. Now, there's no need to be unpleasant, Harris. Unless, of course, it's your complaint manifesting itself. <laughs> Manifest me the port. I'm empty. What are we going to do about it? Fill me up. No, no. What are we going to do about us? Well, uh, you're a writer, Jay. That means you're supposed to have imagination. Well, think of something. Yes, think of something, Jay. Oh, 
Well, now, if you put it like now, that... don't get long-winded. I propose we seek out some retired and old-world spot far from the madding crowd and dream away a sunny week among its drowsy lanes. Some half-forgotten nook hidden away by the fairies. Ye gods. Out of reach of the noisy world. Some quaint-perched area on the cliffs of time from whence the surging waves of the 19th century would sound far off and faint. We asked for it, George, and we got it. Mm, I'd rather make it a sunny fortnight. I have a fortnight's holiday beginning Monday. We'll go to the country. No, no, no. If you want a rest and a change, you can't beat a sea trip. That wouldn't suit George. He gets sick. Not at all. Harry's is the one. Remember that day off Sheerness? The boiled beef, the strawberries and the cream? That was Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, it was my brother-in-law. But let's not spoil the memory of what I hope we all considered a goodish supper. No, no. Oh, rather not. Hmm... Why don't we go up the river? The river? The river. We'll have fresh air, exercise, quiet. The constant change of scene will occupy our minds, including what there is of yours, Harris. And the hard work will give us an appetite and make us sleep well. Well, I don't know that you ought to do anything that'll be calculated to make you sleep more than you already do, George. Might be dangerous. I mean, after all, there are only 24 hours in each day. I think the river's a good idea. So do I. <laughs> I'm surprised George should come out with it. What do you say, Montmorency? <laughs> Sorry, old dog. It's three to one. The motion's carried. Can't you just picture the blissful scene? Harris and you at the oars. You at the tiller is what you mean. If we take our turn, you take yours. My turn at what? The oars. It isn't oars, it's skulls. Of course. George knows nothing of the river. What sort of craft do you picture, George? How do you react to a punt? Harris is strong with a pole that is long. What? Montmorency reacts with a grunt. So do I. I fell in one's punting. No oars, it must be, sorry, skulls. The splash that they make always lulls me to sleep in the stern. George, will you never learn to think of the fellow who pulls? No, you take the skulls with old Jay. But Harris, you're stronger, I'd say. It's more suitable if I'm guiding the skiff while I'm dreaming of writing all day. All day. All day. About a sail. Three, three men in a boat up the river, we will go on a sailing spree where the wind is free. If we get no wind, we'll have to row. Three, three men, men in a boat, boat. will discover haunts remote, like Columbus bowl in the days of old. If the craft don't burn or overturn on three, three men in a boat, 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 three. In the boat, all our gear aboard we'll stack And we'll say goodbye to our friends and fly If I like it, I may not come back to see Men in a boat down at Henley, they will gloat For they've ladies there, but it's Hades there We'll have none of that at our regatta Three, 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 three men in a boat It isn't that I'm not fond of the ladies Nor am I, I mean I am too I mean neither is it for me, if you know what I mean well, Ladies are all very well in their place. Which isn't well. Three men in a boat, we must appreciate that their men are men. Back to nature then, with a knife and fork and spoon and plate. For three men in a boat, simple fare will serve a float. Highland beef to start. And some apple tart. And a pint or two of ale will do. For three men in a three men in a three. In a boat, in a boat, in a what? In a what? In a boat, in a three men in a. Oh, all right then, three men and you. In, in a, a boat. boat. Do we take a tent? No tents. You can never put them up, even when it's dry. Mostly it isn't. Now, if it's wet, I'm for sleeping at inns. Agreed. Yeah. But for when it's fine, we'll have a boat with a cover, you know. You fix iron hoops across it and stretch canvas over the hoops. Oh, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. I've suffered under those too. You'd better let me superintend the putting up. Yeah, that's as maybe. Now, what do we take with us? Hmm. Now, now, we've got to be able to row this boat, remember? We mustn't think of the things we could do with, only of the things we can't do without. Such as? Well, a rug each, lamp, soap, a brush and comb between us, a toothbrush. Each. A, a basin, a pail, tooth powder, shaving tackle, big towels for bathing. Ah, yes, 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 yes. we must yes. have an early morning dip. 
Nothing like it to give you an appetite. Yeah, Harris, if I may say so, there'll be quite enough hard work in towing sufficient food for you upstream as it is. Oh. <laughs> now, clothes. We, we can wash our shirts in the river when they get dirty, and we can wash our trousers too. Uh, have you ever done these things, George? No, but I know those who have. Child's play. I don't know that I'd care to have a child play with my laundry. Now, don't quibble. Plenty of socks we must take and plenty of handkerchiefs. They'll do to wipe things with. Frying pan. Teapot and kettle. Uh, and a stove. Eggs and bacon, cold meat, tea, bread, butter and jam. Cheese? No. Oh? No, no cheese. There's too much odour about cheese. Gets into everything. Cheese will want the boat to itself. Uh, fruit pies, tomatoes, green stuff. Lemonade? Whiskey, in case we get upset. And aspirin, in case you do afterwards. And writing paper. Must have writing paper. What for? Want to keep in touch. Who with? Who with? Won't you want to pen a line to Ethel Bertha? Uh, George, please. I thought you were more or less betrothed. Oh, steady, old man. Don't pry into old Jay's secret life. And you're Clara. What about her? I am unattached. <laughs> you won't be for long. No more old Jay. The trouble with you fellows is you won't admit there's much to be said for the opposite sex. My feelings for Ethel Bertha are neither here nor there, and I'd be grateful if you'd forbear to mention her name, George. And keep off Clara while you're at it. It's my belief, George, and I think Harris shares it, that you're lacking in seriousness sometimes in your approach yeah, to the yeah, ladies. Yeah. I mm. like that. I'm the only one here who's really unattached, and I'm the only one who's thought of taking writing paper. As a matter of fact, unattached isn't really quite the word. No? And lacking in seriousness doesn't fit either. It may surprise you two to know that in taking off in this boat trip, I'm going to be missed. Yes? Missed by everybody. No. Especially by somebody who isn't just anybody. You're going to see some tears when my goodbyes I'm saying. Especially tears from one who fears her heart I'll be betraying. When home I'll get, she'll greet me so because she'll miss me when I go. I'm mentioning no names, but that's the gist. I'm going to be missed. Good heavens, George, I never suspected. I do now, I'm very suspicious. Well, I'm no different from you two. O.J., you're going to be missed. Missed by Ethel Bertha. George. She loves you so, she'll miss you so. I hope to heaven you're worth her. George. And Harris, you'll be missed. Missed by Mistress Clara. Ah. The gentlest girl you ever saw. I wonder you don't scare her. Now, George, you're going far too far. Indelicate, you nearly are. If you don't desist, you're going to get my fist. You're going to be missed. <laughs> We're going to be missed. Missed by everybody. Especially by somebody who is just anybody. You're going to see some tears when my goodbyes I'm saying. But especially tears from one who fears her heart will be betraying. I think it may be me if one day Ethel Bertha marries. And Claire has observed that she's reserved for William Samuel Harris. We're going to be missed when we begin to wander. But absent so the sages say will make the heart grow fonder. When home we get the three of us. They'll pant and pet and make a fuss. And what do you bet the next thing on the list? What's that? We're going to be kissed. George, steady. We're going to be missed. But on our return, we're going to be kissed. They'll never resist. And neither will we. We're going to be kissed. We're, we're going, going to be kissed. kissed. We arranged to start on the following Saturday from Kingston. Harris and I would go down in the morning and take the boat up to Chertsey, and George would meet us there. George goes to sleep at a bank from ten to four each day, except Saturdays when they wake him up and put him outside at two. Packing was a bit of an operation. I packed first, for the three of us, and then Harris repacked. George repacked last. Then we packed George off to the bank and piled our luggage into a cab. Time was pressing. I've never known it when it wasn't. Clippity-clop, clippity-clop, most of the necessary things done, how do we cope? Where is the soap? Never will catch the train to Kingston. Wonderful horse, staying the course, moving along the Thames embankment. Clippity-cloppity, lippity-loppity, looking a fearful mess. He never wavers, he's going to save us, he's braver than old black mess. Clippity-clop, clippity-clop, Parliament Square is only looming. What is the time? When will it chime? Eleven o'clock will soon be booming. Under Big Ben, over the bridge, wondering will we find a porter? Oh, what a drag for our poor little nag, and he's using a shoe or two. But he's resigned, and he just doesn't mind if he's meeting his water. Porter, Porter, can you take our luggage? Oh, I'll get a second trolley. You'll be wanting the boat train. Boat train? You're off to America. I can see that. America? We're going to Kingston. Oh, Lime. We want the 11.5. And we want it fast. Tom, I say, Tom, any idea where the Kingston train goes from? Which platform? That's what I'm asking you. 
Five times. Eleven five, so they say. News to me. Any idea where from? I've got a feeling it's platform one. More likely two. Uh, here's the station master. Let's ask him. Uh, uh, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Beautiful spring day. Yeah, the eleven five for Kingston. What about it? Which platform will it go from? Ah, now there you may well have me. Wait a minute, no. <laughs> Silly. Of course you want the local. I'll get you a porter. We've got one. What we want is a train. Good Lord, look at the clock. 11.2. It'll be 11.5 in no time. In about three minutes, eh? Time and tide wait for no man. It's a sad moment. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Excuse me, you're the traffic superintendent. I know. Could you help us to the 11.5? For Kingston. We must catch it if we haven't missed it. Funny thing, I was on the trail of that train myself. Bumped into a fellow just now, swears he saw it. Which platform? What? Oh, why, three. Three. <laughs> Is this the 11.5 for Kingston? It should be. It must be. It isn't. I rather think it's the Southampton Express. No, no. The wind's a loop. Anyway, it isn't a Kingston train. I'm sure it isn't. Uh, so am I. Mind you, I can't say why I'm sure. But you're sure? Quite sure. I'm certain. Porter, for heaven's sake. Half a mile. I haven't even got a quarter of a mile, Harris. That's it. I'll swear it is on the high-level platform. I'd know that boiler anywhere. Come on, Jen. <laughs> No, Harris, I haven't a lot of faith in this porter. I'm going to ask the engine driver. Hey! Good morning, gentlemen. Are you going to Kingston in half a minute? Uh, 11.5, to be exact? I don't think I'm going anywhere in half a minute. Uh, Kingston, now, yes. Can't say for certain, of course, but I'd rather think I am. Uh, if I'm not the 11.5 for Kingston, I'm pretty confident I'm the 9.32 for Virginia Water. 9.32? Uh, or the 10 a.m. for the Isle of Wight. 10 a.m., but it's past 11. Isle of Wight Express, mind you, I'm speaking of. Now, why don't you up aboard and surprise yourselves? Harris, would you agree this matter's pressing? I'd say it was desperate. Give me half a crown. What for? Never mind what for. Give me half a crown. And get the porter to put our luggage aboard. Uh, driver, see this? Yes. It's yours if you take us to Kingston. Oh, but, sir. Nobody will ever know on this line what you are or where you're going. You slip off quietly to go to Kingston. You know the way. Uh, well, I don't rightly know as I ought to. Uh, Dan. <laughs> Well, bless me. I'm only the station master, but I do think they might let me know when a train leaves on time. So they're off to Kingston. Kingston? But good heavens, that isn't the train for Kingston. It's the Exeter Mail. I happen to know. I saw the address on one of the parcels. Now, this will put the traffic superintendent in a peak. I'd better go and break it to him myself. <laughs> My word, Harris, the river's at its best. A perfect summer day. Oh, the station master at Waterloo thinks it's spring. Well, it is spring. End of May coming into June. But it's summer, really. Look at that sun. Oh! Well, I didn't mean you to take me literally. You know, the seasons in this country have little or nothing to do with the time of year. You can get fog in July, sunshine in December. It's fascinating. For once, we have a warm day in May. I don't think that means anything. Yes, old Father Thames takes some beating. Old Father Harris is taking a bit of beating pulling this boat. Not far to Chertsey. Then we'll have George. <laughs> we'll have you long before then. I must say one thing, Harris. You want a row? No, not that. Uh, I don't want to hog it, you know. You only have to say the word. Uh, don't disturb my thinking, Harris. I was about to remark that old George isn't the only one who's going to be missed. I hope. At least I'm missing somebody. Ethel Bertha? I saw her for a moment yesterday, and when I told her we three men were going to fend for ourselves up the river for a fortnight, she had tears in her eyes. That's odd old Clara was crying too when I said goodbye. She was quite happy at first. It was when I mentioned I might try my hand at cooking that she began to cry. I wonder if... Uh... Yes. No. No. If you're asking yourself whether those sweet creatures could have been amused at the thought of our possible discomfiture, you're wrong. I think. 
In any event, I'm Miss Ethelbertha. The birds seem to sing her name. The very trees, the very reeds. They're whispering, Ethelbertha. Funny, I can't hear them. That's because you have no soul, Harris. You never weep, you know not why. If you ever had tears in your eyes, it's because you put too much Worcester over your chop. I tell you, I'm hearing things. The river's alive. Voices all around me tell me spring is here to stay. Summer, autumn, I'll be feeling things I feel today. Seasons mean no more to me and winter's far away. Spring is in the heart and hearts will sing. All together, all together, all together sing. Life can be a very, very, very pleasant thing. The spring a young man's fancy lightly turns to love. How could fancy fail with such a perfect sky above? Trees are budding, bees are buzzing, nature plays her part. Feel the touch of nature in your heart. Love and sunshine, they can make you feel just like a king. All together, all together, all together sing. Life can be a very, very, very pleasant thing. Well, now, Jay, I can't allow you to miss the pleasure of rowing this boat any longer. Come on, change over. Oh, Harris, look out. Look out, Harris, you ass! My word, this boat's heavy. Do you suppose we overdid the packing? As far as I'm concerned, we underdid it. I could have sworn I packed a change of clothes. Well, you look well enough in my new flannel trousers. From where I'm sitting, I can't see they don't meet in the middle. And if I may say so, Harris, my blue blazer becomes you better than your own. I don't feel orange is your colour. Mine will soon dry out. Yes, yes, I'm afraid it will. I should be happy in one way. I'm rather attached to that blazer of mine. But I can't but feel unhappy about your choice for the river. It isn't so much the orange. Oh, shut up. It's the red stripe alongside it. The fellow has the right to set off his personality. That blazer, Harris, sets you off like a firework. Cut your losses. You can wear mine for the rest of the trip. I can't say more. They don't. Ah. <clears throat> what is it? That's the first time you've smiled since you fell in. Hampton Court. We're coming up to Hampton Court. Now, one thing I did remember to pack was my map. And I know just where to lay my hand on it. Map? What map? I bought it yesterday afternoon. It tells you all the ins and outs. What of? The Hampton Court maze. Ever been in? No. Can't say I have. Can't say I want to either. We have to push on and meet George. Not without doing the maze. We won't stay long. We'll just go in and walk to the middle and out again. I must try out this map. Look, I feel, Harris, that the Hampton Court maze, or any other maze for that matter, will have a legitimate complaint against you if you enter it with a map. After all, the purpose of a maze is to confuse. I don't like being confused. Uh, I feel it my duty to go in and out. Yep. Speaking of in and out, you can take your turn at the skulls again. But in order to make the change, if you don't mind, we'll both step out onto the bank. And one at a time. Here we are, the maze. But they don't catch me. You'd better hide that map, at least until we're inside. Two top of those, please. It isn't worth it, Jay. It isn't a maze at all. I'll explain in a minute. Awkward things, these turnstiles. Stick your tail down, Montmorency. There you are, you see. Now, off we go. Now, we turn right at this hedge. Now, right again. But you're not looking at the map. Don't need to. I'll, I'll explain in a minute. Right. 
Ah, what have we here? Ah, I say, Governor, you don't happen to know the way out, do you? Well, you can follow me if you like. Do you know where the exit is? Certainly, I'm just showing my friend here the way to the middle. We shall be about three minutes, then we shall turn round and come out again. Ah, well then, we'll come along with you, eh? Yes. Oh, very kind of you, I'm sure. But he knows the way. Oh, good, my feet are worn down to the end. Come along then, fall in. I say, what a crowd. You'd better get all these people to follow us, Harris. They look tired. Tired? I've given up all hopes of ever getting either in or out or of ever seeing my home and friends again. It's a crime. They get you in and leave you to Oh, it's a crime. Uh, we're following Mr... Uh, ha Harris. Uh, yes, we're following Mr. Harris here, aren't we? Yes, yes. yes. Well, now, I I I'm just going in, then I shall turn round and come out again. You're all at liberty to follow. Oh, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Bless you, Mr. Harris, are you sure you know what you're doing? My dear Jay, don't let anybody hear you ask such a question. You might plant doubts. Doubt isn't the only thing that's going to be planted if you don't get these people out there desperate. Oh, Charlie's hungry. I've been here all morning and he's missed his feed. I don't like to look at him. Oh, neither do I. I'd be ever so grateful if you'd carry him, Mr. Harris. Oh, well, I think I... Oh, oh. oh, you are kind. I'll take your arm if you don't mind. What? Oh, oh yes, do, madam. Do, oh, we please. don't want to lose you, don't we? <laughs> Oh, shut up, Montmorency. Now, now, uh, before we move on, my friends, it may amuse you to know that I have a map. A map? A map. He says he's got a map. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, oh, it's wet. Never mind. Uh, I don't need to look at it anyway. It contains one simple piece of advice. The self-same advice I used to give to my troop in my scouting days. Just keep turning to the right. Oh, your goal is out of sight. Don't heed people who'll advise you. If you're wise, you'll simply just keep turning to the right. Don't try veering to the left. You may find yourself bereft of a sense of world importance, and you oughtn't, so you must keep turning to the right. This is the call. Give it your all and fall in shoulder arms to victory. Follow the flag, pick up a bag and drag your weary bodies after me. Best foot forward, chin up high. Last man, close the gate and wide. We don't want the cars to trail us. If you fail us, you'll invite a comment impolite. I see you stand. Like greyhounds in the strips, cry we're for Harris. Yes, by George, until you bust, but first you must keep turning to the right. Just keep turning to the right. Right will lead you to the light. Be true blue and follow through, cause if you do, the other chap may bark, but never bite. Keep your eye upon the ball. One good whack and that is all. Sliced it, never mind, something enticed it, but at least it's turning to the right. Right as the hand, holding the sword, for death must mean something, don't you know? Look at the word, in Latin it's dexter, dexterous means deep but never slow. The Latin for left is sinister, so there. That's not absolutely square. Don't be skittish, never squirm, be firmly British. And you said the universe alight. <laughs> and also, Papa, now hoist that banner in a patriotic manner, putting your trust in all that's just keep turning to the right. Harris, this must be a very big maze. One of the largest in Europe. Must be, because we've walked a good two miles already. <laughs> What's that? 
What's what? On the ground. It's half of a penny bun. Well, what of it? What of it? We passed it seven minutes ago. That's what of it. Oh, impossible. It is, and it's ever so possible. That's Charlie's bun. He choked on it, and I threw it down there myself just before I met you, Mr. Harris. And I wish to God I never had met you, Mr. Harris, if you want it plain. No, 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 let's not lose our heads. I think you're going to lose yours, Harris, if you don't watch out. You're an imposter, Mr. Harris. Imposter, imposter, nothing of the sort. It's all down here in black and white. You just keep turning to the right, it says. And here's the map. Ah, that map may be all right enough if you know whereabouts in it we are now. Well, of course. You mean you do know where we are? No. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, now, if I may make a suggestion. I wouldn't, Harris, but if you do, make it fast. Uh, I think the best thing to do would be to go back to the entrance and begin again. Oh, no. uh, I really don't see what better we can do than follow Mr. Harris. <laughs> we couldn't do worse, is what I mean, Harris. Say something encouraging and quick. Uh, let's press on, shall we? <laughs> in the middle. Shall I pretend I was aiming at this all along? No, I don't think I would. Uh, well, at least we know we're in the middle. <laughs> now, Harris, I'll take the map. Follow me, everybody. <laughs> now, let's see where I've brought us. Back to the middle. <laughs> It's the middle again. It's still the middle. <laughs> Shall we, shall we take another look at the map? Do you know what you can do with that map, sir? You can go and curl your hair with it, that's what. Uh, I, I think we'd better sing out for the keeper, Harris. Keeper! 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 Look! There he is! Up there on the ladder! Yeah. Keeper! We're lost! We're, We're lost. lost! We're lost! What's he saying? What? We're lost! It's, it's all right. He's going to hop over the hedge and help us. Thank heaven you've come. What seems to be the trouble? It doesn't seem to be, it is. We're lost. Yes, yes, we're lost. lost. Oh, you're all lost, are you? Yeah, Mr. Harris here has a theory that you just keep turning to the right. That's right. That's just what you do do. Do do? He says it's what you do do. Ah, there you are, you see. Of course, we have to assume you know your right hand from your left. But, good man, are you trying to insinuate that this isn't my right hand? Oh. If that's the end you've been following, it's no wonder you're all lost. Well, anyway, it proves I was right in theory. I've been right in practice, too. You've all been confusing me. Now, Keeper, uh, do you mind uh, taking over this baby? Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, follow me, everybody. <laughs> Ask me, Keeper, you're a fool. Yes, yes. Oh, I've only been on the job a week. They must have been pulling me leg. Who must? Well, the other keepers. When I started, they, they gave me a map. Look, it's here in black and white. See what it says? You, you just, just keep turning to the, to the right. right. It was a lucky thing one of the old keepers came back from his tea, or we'd be in that maze now. You know, Jay, that map must have been got up as a practical joke. It wasn't a bit like the real thing. No. It was misleading. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It was also lucky that we were able to hitch our boat onto this steam launch. It only goes as far as Shepparton. Yes. From there on, it's rowing again. Yes. I don't see how we can pick up George before nightfall. Oh, we'll just have to put your back into it. Yeah. 
I said, Jay, uh, you won't mention to George about the maze. I've no wish to see violence. Good. We might be able to get him to go in on the way back. Uh, uh, Harris, it's my belief that George has suffered enough at your hands. He's been cooling his heels at Chertsey for three hours already. He'll be cross. Gazing into all that water, he may have become suicidal. Water could do terrible things to a man. Yeah, poor George. He'll be lonely. I must say, it was jolly nice of you girls to come down and see me off. I don't know what's happened to my two friends, but I, I can't say I mind their being late. I <laughs> shall miss you, George. Oh, yes. Will you? Really? Oh, thank you. I shall miss you, too. So shall I. So <laughs> shall we. Georgie, George, darling. Georgie. George. Oh, now, now. We mustn't get sentimental. <laughs> or must we? Oh, yes. Do let. Let's. let's. <laughs> George. Uh, yes. Which one of us will you miss? Uh, yes, George, which, which one? one? Which, which one will, will you miss? Georgie, which, which one? one? Uh, <laughs> uh, that'll be telling, wouldn't it? Um, well, um, all of you, of course. But I'd rather you were seven than one, uh, if you follow me. Uh, let me explain. I met a little girl named Susie. A somersault did my heart. I told her if I should lose you, I wouldn't know what to do, see Susie. What little girl to choosey? The prettiest I have seen. But Susie had a lover who's the heavyweight champion of Bethnal Green. <laughs> yes, ladies, oh, ladies, sweet ladies, how I love. I met a little girl named Millie. A bit of a horsey lass reminded me of a filly, but I loved her willy nilly milly. Everybody said he's silly. His milly is no great shakes. I didn't mind till they wondered, Willie, Bakery twin, the Derby stakes. Ah, ladies, ladies, sweet ladies, how I love you. I met a little girl named Stella, my firmament's brightest star. One showery day, this fella said, Come underneath my umbrella, Stella. What a fire and she was. She battered me with my gamp. I haven't got Stella, I've no umbrella. My heart is broken and I'm all so damp. <laughs> Dear ladies, cruel ladies, strong ladies, I still love you. I met a girl named Ivy, so silly sweet was she. The spirit of cling to thrive in her, sufficient four or five had Ivy. Undulant and can Ivy, wherever you'd hide she'd seek. Reminded me so of poison Ivy, Ivy would have choked me inside a week. Oh, George, sweet, George, boy, George, how we treat you. named Alice, an aristocrat was she. I'm lacking in financial ballast. She required a golden palace. Alice, perfectly devoid of malice. She needed a millionaire. She didn't get a palace. I didn't get Alice. And as far as I'm concerned, the exchange is fair. So, so afraid I have paid, ladies. And Georgie, we still love you, George. Yes? Isn't there someone who's very, very special? Isn't there, George? Well, there was. Let me tell you about her. I met her. Named Rosie, I practically married her. <laughs> so cuddly and so cozy, she deserved a special posy, Rosie. When I started to propose it, she suddenly changed her mind. Why? She'd heard about Susie, heard about Millie, heard about Stella, heard about Ivy, heard about Alice, etc. The safety in numbers now I find. There he is, just round the bend, through those trees there. I can see him. There's George. At least it's George's blazer. I'm pretty certain it's George inside it. Good heavens, Harris, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ladies with him. What? Look out! You nearly had us into the bank. Now, what can George be doing with seven? Fellow's a Turk. Remember the special one he told us about? I wonder what happened to her. She's heard about Susie, heard about Billy, heard about Stella, heard about Heidi, heard about Alice, etc. There's safety in numbers, now you find. Look, uh, there are my friends. I must leave you now. No! Don't, 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 don't. Have we come to? Uh, 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 no, no, no. They, they wouldn't like it. Uh, I mean, Ethel Bertha wouldn't, uh, nor would Clara. Uh, goodbye, girls. See you in a fortnight's time. We will! Goodbye, oh, Georgie! Goodbye! George! 
So, there you are. I wonder you have the face to show up at all. Aren't you going to present us to the ladies? Ladies? What, what ladies? Oh, we distinctly saw... Oh, now, Jay, you mustn't let that writer's imagination of yours run away with you. Well, George, I could swear that... I... I no doubt you could. Um, uh, can we find a corner for this? What is it, a frying pan? We've got one. No, no, no. They're all the rage this season, these are. Everybody has got them up the river. It's a banjo. I never knew you played the banjo. Well, I don't exactly, but it's very easy, they tell me. And I've got the instruction book. Let's hope it's more useful than Harris's map. Harris's what? Uh, never mind, uh, uh, George. Uh, no, no, no. What do you suppose you're doing sitting there? Well, isn't this my seat? 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my dear lad, you're going to take the tow rope. Jay and I are about due for a rest. You mean tow it? The boat? Me? Yeah, it's very simple. You just walk along the bank, pulling. But I've been working at a bank all morning. So have we. Not at a bank, but we've been at it. And most of the afternoon, too. The tow rope. Oh, but I say... The tow uh, rope. Oh. oh, all right. But I don't think I'd better tow too far. We want to get the canvas up over the boat while we can see what we're doing. Yes, I hadn't thought of that. Then there's the food. That I had thought of. Good. All right, then. Give me the rope. I don't mind towing you two for a bit. Oh, don't let Mark Morency sniff around my banjo. And, and don't, whatever you do, let Harris shove his foot through it. Three men in a boat up the river they will go. On a sailing spree where the wind is free. If they get no wind, they'll have to row. Or one can tow. I, 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 I don't know whether it's any consequence to you two, but I, I, I've lugged you two to stains. Don't you want to stop? No hurry. I think we should press on while we're doing so well. Now, you may be doing well, and I'm not. But I shall now take the tiller, and you two can do as well as you like. Towing a boat is hard going, but rowing is harder still. Especially when rowing uphill. Picnic point. That suggests food. My stomach's been suggesting it for hours. D don't you think we might pull on to Magna Carta Island? No. Jay? If you mean for us to pull, no. Picnic Point seems very pretty to me. The gas works would seem pretty to me at the moment. I'm hungry. Right. But I think we ought to get the cams up first. Oh, no. Oh, yes, before the light fails. It's past seven. George is right. Oh, confound him. Well, let's get these damn metal hoops up then. I don't like the look of them. There's no call to use bad language, Harris. Take this end. Mm. Be careful of the hinge in the middle. Oh, blast, it nipped me. Mm. Now, I put my end in here... And you put your in. Oh! Harris, you ass. Hold on, can't you? You pulled. I didn't. You let go. When you two have quite finished, will one of you take the other side of my hoop? Gently does it. Never panic when dealing with metal. Oh! 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 What a brute! Oh! Oh! Oh, there. Yes. There. Now the canvas. Unroll it, George. To fasten one end over the nose of the boat. I'll stand a bit ships here to receive it and roll it on to Jay. Right? Right? right. Yep, yeah, right. right. Up, George. Where have you gone? H Harris, are you there? No, brethren, yes. Well, you said up. Yes, but not that far up. You might have smothered me. I'm waiting, you two. I'm waiting to receive the canvas. I'm beginning to wish we'd brought a tent. Now, look, pull the canvas taut, and I'll fasten it right over the... Montmorency! Montmorency, go away! Montmorency! Let go, Montmorency! Let go! Ah. There, got you. Tie it, Jay, tie it. Oh! Now what? My thumb, you tied my thumb in. Oh! Oh, dear. I don't know why I ever got mixed up with you two. Not one of you with any scouting instincts. Oh! Finished? Oh. Now, how about food? I put the kettle on. Ah, then we'll all stay here in the stern and get the things out. Don't, whatever you do, go near the kettle. Why? Only one way to get a kettle to boil up the river. Oh? Yeah, you have to go away and ignore it. Get the plates out, Harris. The cold meat, George. Mm. Uh, don't look round. All right. It's also a good plan to talk rather loudly about not needing tea. Uh, I don't want any tea, do you, George? Oh, no, no, I, I don't like tea. Well, neither do I. No, we'll have lemonade instead. I'd much rather. Tea gives me indigestion. Ah! Got you. 
What did I say? Warm the pot. Empty that out. Now, one, two, three, one for Montmorency. Yes, now we'll just let that stand. Shove the kettle back on the stove. Montmorency, I'd keep away from that kettle if I were you. My word, I'm looking forward to my supper. Ah, here we are. Corned beef and pickles. Mm, bread and butter. Montmorency. Montmorency. That's a kettle, not a cat. Montmorency. He's after that spout. Montmorency. <laughs> My word, that dog can run. Oh, well. Shall we tuck in? hoops with your head, Jay. Seems to be a particularly difficult thing to do. <laughs> oh, 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 now I've bumped mine. <laughs> George. Oh, me. Wonderful what a bit of food inside does for you. <laughs> I'm almost beginning to forgive you, Harris, for taking me into that maze. Shh, Jay, shut up. I don't know what you two are bumbling about. I'm for bed. Ah, yes. Rather. Now, uh, one thing I want to impress on you men. Up at the crack and into the river. Wake up, dive in, no shirking. Shirking? I wouldn't miss that early morning dip for anything. Or me. I don't know when I'd look forward to anything as much. Well, good night, George. Harris? Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Tell Mrs. Poppets I'll have sausages. Uh, Mrs. Poppets is in Chelsea. This is Picnic Point. I say, George, did you sleep? Oh, I was having my first wink when you woke me. Uh, it takes a while to get accustomed to all these lumps and things under your back. Same with me. Oh. I kept looking for one lump. Took the rug up. Not a sign. As soon as I lay down, there it was. I think lumps lie around and wait for folk who sleep in boats. Harris has done better. But it's high time he was up. I'd hate him to miss his dip. Uh, Jay... I'm not sure I'm not going to miss mine, just for this morning. Uh, hmm. Well, you, well, maybe there's something in what you say about becoming accustomed. Hmm? It'd be a shame for old Harris to miss it, though. He set his heart on it. Hand me that mm. boat hook. Right. Oh, oh, all right. All right, I'll be down in a minute. I'll have my lace-up boots, if you'll put them out, and, and chops, uh, chops with... Was... Oh, oh. Hello, you two. Where are we? On the river. You're going to be in it in a matter of seconds. Wake up, dive in. That's what you said. I should take off your nightshirt first. Uh, what's the day like? Uh, anyone thought to take a look? Lift up the canvas, George. Oh. Oh. Mmm. It's raining, of course. Yes. But it's that cold rain. Jay? Yes? You remember the river spoke to you yesterday? It said Ethelbertha, you told me. What? Uh, yes, yes, I remember. Well, it's talking to me now. I hear it quite distinctly. I hear it too. So do I. Do you think we've caught a chill? We may well have saved ourselves from catching one. Listen. Trip, 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 people sitting, listening to the raindrops fall on Britain. What a green country. Trip, 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 here's what makes it green. Patient people you have never seen till you've seen the British waiting till they draw for the rain to stop. There's rain that's warm, though not a lot of it. Rain that's drizzly, the British say, what of it? 
But the rain that nearly makes a Briton lose hold Is the rain that's much too cold Much too cold, much too cold Is an English morning Falls a quiver on the river One long shiver and that's fair warning Dyer tells me that it's due now Or I'd never, never know Overcoat will be a boon now Any moment snow Far too fresh, much too cool For the pool is an English flaming dune Don't compel, don't feel well I can't tell you the names I'm naming, June. Enough to make even a climate swell. Point me out other climates where summer nips you as it grips you here. Let's be patriotic. It's our land, but it's parkier than Switzerland. And all told, it's a touch too much, too cold. And another thing, it, it might be difficult getting back into the boat. Where's George? Eh? Uh, I'm putting my socks on. Oh, yes, throw my trousers across, will you? Mm -hmm. Steady. Uh, you, you, you going in, Jay? Uh, it might be weeds about. Dangerous things, weeds. I'll just hop out onto the bank and have a wash. Where's the bucket? This is going to be tricky. Ah, that tree. Now, if I can just hang on to this branch, I might be able to lean down and scoop up a little water into the pan. <laughs> Joe, old Jay has gone in. I didn't think he'd have the pluck to do it, did you? Uh, what's it like in there, Jay? Oh, this is lovely. Oh, you are duffers not to come in. I wouldn't miss this for worlds. Why, why won't you try it? I don't know what's a little determination. <laughs> Harris? Well, I, I've got my boots on now. It seems a pity to take them off again. What do you say? That's what I say. Uh, where's my shirt? My word, you missed something. I think we did. Oh. I say, uh, Jay, are you all right? All right? Of course I'm all right. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Only when you've gone blue. Oh, that's the blood circulating. Well, it isn't circulating in your fingers. They've gone white. Don't be a fool. Hand me my shirt, for heaven's sake. Careful. Don't throw it. Oh, you, you lunatic George. It's gone overboard. I thought you caught it. <laughs> it's gone overboard, has it? <laughs> oh, poor old Jay. Oh, oh, never mind. Don't oh, you, you dribbling maniacs. You, you rotten cackling imbeciles. Give me that hitcher. Oh, 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 here you are. Here you are. Oh, poor old Jay. Never mind. Oh, oh, you've hooked it, Jay. You've hooked it. Now, careful now. Draw it in slowly. Oh, you dropped it. Yes. <laughs> I've dropped it. <laughs> Aren't you? Aren't you going to do, uh, get it out? It'll sink. <laughs> I don't much mind if it does. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, I've just noticed. <laughs> it isn't my shirt. Oh, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? What, what? Mine, you blithering, cackling idiots. <laughs> no, 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 give me that hitcher. J J Jay, no, Jay. No, the, the hitcher. Ha shirt. Harris. <laughs> Harris, make him give me that hitcher. All the blithering... By George, this is the life. I can't think why we didn't put this sail up before. We've been rowing our insides out for three days now. Some of us have. In any case, George, you may not know that a sail requires breeze. This is the first time we've had a following wind since we left Cookham. Want me to take the tiller, Jay? I don't mind. 
There's no hardship in handing a tiller, Harris. If I'd been rowing, I'd have accepted your offer. If you'd been rowing, I wouldn't have made it. What's that sail, George? Ah, this is the life. It was. Of course, the wind dropped, but our spirits didn't. George and Harris rowed away. I stuck to steering as far as possible. I'm very fond of steering. As day followed pleasant day, at least two of them were fine, I began to keep a sort of diary. I had a vague idea I might try my hand at a book about all this later. Food was uppermost in all our thoughts. We'd brought, among other things, some cold beef. On the fifth day, we felt we ought to get it eaten. It didn't go well. The beef itself was in good fettle, but there was something lacking. Cold beef. My favourite. Nothing like it. An old jay forgot to pack the mustard. Well, I don't take it, as a rule. But I didn't half want some with that beef. I'd have given worlds for some. Mm, me too. I heard a fellow say that once going up a mountain in Switzerland. And it wasn't mustard he wanted to give worlds for. It was a glass of beer. Mm. When he came to a little shanty where they kept it, he kicked up a fearful row because they charged him five francs for a bottle. He said it was a scandal. He wrote to the Times about it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What do you say we finish off with this? What is it? A tin of pineapple. Ah. Oh, oh, yes. I'm very fond of pineapple. So am I. I've got a spoon. Well, that's no good. You can't open a tin with a spoon. I mean, to eat it with. I say, Jay, look at this picture on the label. Doesn't that make your mouth water? Hurry up, George. Well, if somebody give me a tin opener, I have had these chunks out on a plate in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Uh, tin opener, tin opener. Um, where did you pack it, George? I didn't. You did. I didn't. Jay? Uh, um, let's search the hamper. Let's turn out the bags. Uh, take them out onto the bank and shake them. No? No. Couldn't be under the boards at the bottom of the boat, could it? I don't think we should surrender to a small tin like that. Where's your scout knife, Harris? Give me the tin. Now. Oh, bandage. Did we bring any bandage? Uh, I think it's over on the... George, what are you doing? Well, I'm just having a go with these these scissors here. Oh, oh, oh. God, I, I nearly put my eye out. Hey, give me that first aid box, uh, Harry. Oh, oh. J Jake, here's the hitcher. You, you have a go. Oh, my eye. Oh. Harris, hand me that box over. Oh! Done it? It nearly did me. Look out. It's broken a cup. Harris. Go and get a sharp stone. George? Yes? Come out here and hold on to this tin. What are you going to do? I'm going to take the mast. Harris will put his stone on top of the tin, mm -hmm. and I shall whack the stone. Does Harris know? He will. That's it, Harris. That's just the job. Now, put the point on the top of the tin. Hold it, George. Now, steady now. Easy does it. Easy does nothing as far as this tin's concerned. Go! Go! All right, George. Oh, good thing you were wearing that straw hat. I never will again. Did we open the tin? No. Shall we try again? No. All right, then. I'll go it alone. Jay. <laughs> don't. Don't. You'll break that mask. <laughs> Jay. I think he's gone mad, George. Uh, yes. Hey, just take him. Uh, get him. Uh, hold him. Uh, hold, hold, hold him. Hold, hold him. him. I've got him. No, steady on, Jay. Harris, steady on, Jay. Jay. man. No, steady. Jay. Look, be uh, careful. Are you all right? You... Look at that tin. Look at it, will you? What? It's grinning. I tell you, it's grinning at me. No, no, Jay, Jay, Jay. get a grip on yourself. It's got a great big dent across its label. Jay, Don't you Jay. see it? It's leering at Jay. me. That's what that tin's doing. Jay! It's leering. He's right, you know, Harris. Look, look, eh? Oh, yes. Come here, my beauty. I'll wipe that dent off your face. It's sinking. That's all it's fit for. We've seen the last of that monster. I say, Jay... Yes? I think we ought to hurry away from here. It might rise up again. There's something sinister about that tin. Yes. Yes, you're right. Into the boat. Keep away, you tin. Stay, stay down. Don't you dare come up again, ever. Ever. You stay where you are. Stay there, tin. Do you hear me? Pull away, you two. Right. Oh, my word. <laughs> 
The look on the face of that tin stayed with us until nightfall. But what a nightfall. I can't remember when I've seen so many stars at one gazing. We ran our boat into a quiet nook and cooked supper. Then we lit pipes and the pleasant chat went round. The moon reminded us how fond we were of melon and we'd forgotten to bring any. All at once we felt strangely full of thoughts. We knocked the ashes from our burnt-out pipes and said good night. Then, lulled by the lapping water and the still talkative trees, we fell asleep under all those stars and dreamt. At least I dreamt. Oh, how I dreamt. I dreamt the world was young again and so old-fashionedly new. The simple songs were sung again the sky had a hue of a different blue. The people held their happiness as though they'd never let go. Yet the secret of their happiness each wanted the other to know. The joy they knew was a thing time couldn't change. They shared it with me. I was in a permanent springtime, knowing summer was certain to be. The country bells were rung again without disturbing the dark. The flower garlands hung again around about us. I awoke and remembered the simple secret was love. Oxford. Very pleasant. Somehow good to be on terror that was firmer. Tomorrow we begin the journey back. Day nine. Still not much sun. Can't think what's happened to flaming June. Day ten. The weather nowadays isn't what it was. Harris thinks it has something to do with the invention of steam. In the evening roamed about sweet sonning. This is the most fairy-like nook on the whole river. Day eleven. Put up the sail, but started going backwards, so took it down again. We'll never manage to reach Henley rowing, so we shall go back to one of the Ship Lake Islands and put up there for the night. Good, it's early. Splendid opportunity to try a real slap-up supper. Such as what? If you two will allow me, I'd like to show you what can be done upriver in the way of cooking. Uh -huh. What are you going to cook? Oh, we've got cold beef, vegetables, and any amount of odds and ends. Let's make an Irish stew. Harris, oh. yeah. you and Jay peel me some potatoes. You'll find the potato peeler in one of my boots. I put it there for safety. I say, Harris. Yes? This job is the biggest thing of its kind I've ever been in. The more I peel, the more seems to be left on. I'm peeling heavily. 
By the time I've got all the peel off and all the eyes out, there's no potato. What's that? Well, what do you think it is? Well, it looks like a frightened peanut to me. Oh, this won't do. You're wasting them. You must scrape rather than peel. Well, I'll do anything rather than peel. <laughs> Harris? Yes? These things are all bumps and hollows. We've been at it for half an hour. How many have we done between us? Four. I shall strike. It'll take us the rest of the evening to scrape ourselves. Well, you can't stop at four. Whoever heard of an Irish stew with four potatoes? Here, wash half a dozen and shove them in without peeling. Oh, good. And here's a cabbage, too. I put that in. And a whole peck of peas. Good. Hmm, now, root around you two and we'll shove in all the leftovers. There's a half a pork pie for a start. Uh, and cold bacon, what about that? Bacon, yes. And here's a half tin of salmon. Wonderful invention, Irish stew. You can get rid of so many things that would otherwise hang about. Yes. Uh, here's a couple of cracked eggs. Will they go? Yes, thicken up the gravy. In with them. I say, what's that? What's what? Oh, it's old Montmorency. Isn't that nice? He wants to help. He's got something or other in his mouth. It's a rat. Oh. I don't think we should include that. Oh, why not? Every little helps. It'll never taste mixed up with the other ingredients. I've never heard of a water rat in an Irish stew. I'd rather not experiment, Harris. If you never try a new thing, how can you tell what it's like? It's men like you that hamper progress. Now, I'm in agreement with George. Nonsense. Somebody's got a pioneer. Think of the man who first tried German sausage. I put my foot down. No rat. I second it with my foot. Oh, all right, Carrie, but I think we're missing something now. Over to you, George. Well, I must say I've never tasted anything quite like that before. Nor me. Full marks, George. Well, though I say it myself, it was different. You know, I'm inclined mm. to think you were right about the water rat. It might just have pushed the dish over the edge. <laughs> yeah, it would have pushed me over the edge. That gravy was rich. Mm, but delicious. Mm -hmm. Peas and potatoes might have been softer. Well, we've all got good teeth. Now, who's for finishing up with cherry tart? Mm. 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 Now, you two, what do you say we row over and have a mooch round the town? It's more than an hour to closing time. I've closed. I'll just have a glass of whiskey and a pipe and call it a day. Oh, all right. You can row us over, though. It'll help you to digest that stew. I'll take my banjo, Jay. You never know. Might be able to play something. Hmm. Pull for the shore, then, Harris. Yeah, we'll shout out and you can row over again and pick us up about 10.30, right? Harris? What? All oh, right. Right, yes. Uh, yes, right. And don't go to sleep, Harris. <laughs> I say, Jay, I'm enjoying this no end. Me too. It's a real angler's pub and no mistake. Look at all those fish around the walls. Yes, I always worry about fish in glass cases. I mean, they're not things of beauty. Why don't the fellows who catch them eat them? Who wants to look at them? Well, the fellows who catch them. Take that whacking great trout by the door. That little fellow with a clay pipe has been sitting next to it all evening. Hasn't taken his eyes off it. He caught it. Oh? It took him about a half a minute to tell me. He caught it with a minnow, he said. It doesn't look as if he could land a minnow, does he? And it weighed 18 pounds. Indeed. You sound as if you don't believe him. Well, I'm open. But do you see that man in the green sweater? Yes. Five minutes ago, he told me he caught that trout. You don't say. I don't. He does. He caught it with a fly, and it turned his scale at 26 pounds. Hmm. Look, I'd, I'd like to settle this one way or the other. Uh, landlord? Yes, sir? I, I wonder... Would you mind telling us who caught that trout in the case by the door? The man with the clay pipe says he did, but I think he made a mistake. The man in the green sweater claims it, and we wondered. <laughs> oh, well, that's rich, that is. Fancy Jim Bates claiming that trout, and old Billy Manders. <laughs> hey, they're the sort to give it me to put in my parlour if they caught it, they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, who did catch it? Sheer luck. That's all it was. I played truant from school one day when I were a lad. Bit of string tied round to a tree. Bringing old Matt's out saved me from the beating of my young life. So you caught it? Look, 
sheer luck, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me... Yes, yes. Uh, would that be some sort of a musical instrument you have with you in that bag? It would be, if it could. Speak up, George. It's my new banjo. I'm not really up to it yet. No. Well, care to give us a tune, sir? Well, I... The landlord said a tune, George. You say. Well, the chap would appreciate it if you'd have a go. Oh, uh, Jay? Have a go. Look, sing something loudly and play softly. If you can play the same song you're singing, you're home and dry. Gentlemen! Gentlemen, Mr... Um, uh, uh, George? Ah, Mr. George, you're going to give us a song. Oh, very good. Very good. Uh, uh, what'll it be, Mr. George? Oh, uh, a half a mile and bitter, please. Oh, the landlord means what will you sing? Oh, oh, oh. Well, um, well, everybody, this seems to be very much a, of an angler's house. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my father was a keen angler. He, he married my mother in an angler keen church. <laughs> Sing, George. Uh, oh, right. Um, now, well, here's an angling song my father used to sing. Uh, it goes, um, uh, uh, wait, wait a minute. I, I've, I've almost got it now. Um, oh, good. Uh, uh, there we are. Fred, he was an angler, and when he got wed, every angler friend for miles around came out. Then they celebrated at the sturgeon's head, scoffing lovely 83 and gifts of trout. The best man made a speech, said Fred's landed a peach, she's beautiful, and then he stole a kiss. And then the bombshell broke, the groom got up and spoke, said angler friends, I want to tell you this. Seen the one that got away She was five feet three Pretty as she could be It isn't that I'm complaining Of my luck today But you ought to have seen the one that got away Every angler sat looking at the bride When she rose, the company expected sparks But she smiled upon the bridegroom at her side She said, I'm glad I came But now I've taken his name There's a hole in his net I simply have to patch It may be news to you But I'm an angler too And though today I made my final catch You ought to have seen the one that got away he was six feet four, wider than our church door. I mean to stick to Fred forever and a day, but you ought to have seen the one that got away. Now I don't think that he'll ever get away No, no I don't think that he'll ever get away Well done, George. What's more, you hit a couple of right chords somewhere in the middle there. I heard them. Uh, shall, I, uh, shall I give them another? Uh, no, I don't think I would. They're very happy at present, and we've a four-mile walk. Oh, well. Go good night, then. Um, good night, everybody. Oh, right. uh, mind how you go with that banjo. Whoops. What was that? No harm done, I think. You caught the sight of the case with that trout in it. No, oh, I think it's coming down. Look out, look out, that there glass case. It's leaning crooked. It's falling. That's done it. Oh, Lord. Jay, do you see what I see? We'd better go. What? The trout on the floor. It's all in pieces. It was plaster of Paris. Uh, sure, good night. Yes, uh, good night, all of you. Uh, uh, good night. I say, Jay. Oughtn't we to have paid for it or something? I did think of it, but I dismissed it. The landlord wouldn't have appreciated the offer. He'll want to forget that fish, and it would be a kindness to do the same. Also, he'll have had enough drinks stood him on the strength of that trout to buy himself a whale. Let be. I must say I enjoyed our evening. 
Sorry old Harris wasn't with us. Yeah, Harris hasn't been with us since his second plate of Irish stew. I hope he's all right. <laughs> he's got Montmorency for company. And the whiskey. Yeah, the whiskey's what I'm afraid of. A very little sends a man to sleep after a stew like that. My word, it's dark. As long as we can find the towpath, we'll be as right as rain. I shouldn't have said that. Ah, the towpath. I say, Jay. Yes? You don't happen to remember which of these islands was ours, do you? Uh, no. No, I don't. But there are only four. We'll be all right if Harris is awake. Mm, if he isn't, let's keep walking. Try the next island. Harris! Are you there, Harris? Harris, for goodness sake! Oh, I remember now it was the third island. Good, let's run. It's the only one left. Perhaps there are more after all. Perhaps we're nowhere near the islands. Do you think we've been walking up the wrong towpath? Upstream, I mean. But wait a minute. Look. Where? That light flickering across the water. What? It's, it's Harris. It, uh, it must be. You... Harris! Harris! Uh, Harris! Uh, Harris! Not a sound. <laughs> yeah, yes? <laughs> yes, it's old Montmorency. Yes. <laughs> He's awake anyway. Montmorency! Harris! George, he's ill. I think he's ill. Uh, Harris, are you all right? Harris! Harris, speak to us. What is it? You look as though you'd been through trouble. Swans. It, it's swans. What? I think he said swans. Do you mean they attacked you? These, these two swans, yes. Uh, attack me. But I won courage, you know, and, and skill. You need skill with swans, but, but they came back. Came back? Half an hour later with, with 18 other swans. 18? Tried to drag me out of the boat. It didn't they, my one, 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 Good heavens. Four hours. Four hours we were at it. Killed them. Killed them all. Nothing else for it. How many swans did you say there were? 32. You said 18 just now. No, I didn't. I said 12. Think I can't count? No. <laughs> We never found out the facts about those swans. We asked Harris in the morning, and he said, What swans? Day 12, rain. It hasn't stopped since it started. Rode all day through it. In the evening, we mixed ourselves some toddy and sat around and talked. I knew a man came up the river two years ago. Yes? Slept out in the damp boat on just such another night as this. What happened to him? Gave him rheumatic fever. Nothing could save him. Died in great agony. Ten days afterwards. Hmm. Quite a young fellow he was. Engaged to be married. One of the saddest cases I've ever known. Hmm. 
Come to think of it, uh, yeah. yes. I knew a fellow in the volunteers, slept out under canvas at Aldershot. On just such another night as this? Yes. Woke up in the morning a cripple for life. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to meet him when we get back... Uh, no, no. no. Day 13. Rain. Again rode all day, but with a little less of the gypsy spirit that impelled us yesterday. I did say at one point, while I was at the tiller... You know, there's no reason for us not to enjoy this. It's a change. I like to see the river under all its different aspects. We can't expect to have it all sunshine. We shouldn't want it so. Nature is beautiful, even in her tears. But George couldn't follow my drift. Harris threw a boot that missed me by inches. I've said earlier, Harris has no feeling. In the afternoon, we rallied. In spite of everything old Jay says, I don't think we should allow the weather to beat us. I say... I'm with you, Harris. We've come out for a fortnight's enjoyment on the river. And a fortnight's enjoyment on the river is what we mean to have. Even if it kills us. Jay? If you remember, I've been expressing these sentiments ever since... It's the... only two days more. We're young, relatively. We make it average. After all, when you're set for weather that is fair, feel your good luck building everywhere. Yes, you guess success is in the air. Then down comes the rain. You're so smug you don't know what to do. Safe and snug, good fortune cause it's you. Never saw a sky of such a blue. Then down comes the rain. Tell me there'll soon be a beautiful rainbow. I shall have a brainstorm. You start to count seven hues in the rainbow. Splash, splosh, comes another rainstorm. Be prepared like scouts against defeat. Macintosh galoshes on your feet. Life's down poor, you simply have to beat. When down comes the rain. Windsor. We may as well paddle on to Datchet and put up there for the night. Another jolly evening. In Datchet by five. Finish dinner, say, at half past six. After that, we can walk about the village in the pouring rain until bedtime. We could always find a pub. And sit in the bar parlour. Reading the almanac. Why, the Alhambra would almost be more lively. Yes. With a little supper to follow at a place I wot of. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's Almost a pity we made up our minds to stick to this boat. Yes. If we hadn't made up our minds to contract our certain deaths in this valley old coffin... Yes? It might be worthwhile to mention that there's a train leaves Datchet, I know, soon after five, that would just about land us in town in comfortable time to get a chop... Yes? ...pop along to the Alhambra... Yes? ...and then go to your little restaurant afterwards, Jay. To get a meal really worth calling a meal. Mmm. Mmm. By a strange quirk of fate, I happen to know who's singing at the Alhambra tonight. Who? Mari Lloyd. <laughs> Jeffy 
it sharp, wet to the skin, but never mind it. Wouldn't complain, wonderful train, leaving the room for far behind it. Cold in the nose, look at our clothes, steaming the windows all around us. Happy as Larry that we didn't tarry, we're off to a Lamborghini. Ethel Bertha Beach office. Said I may not. But it's W.G. Grace would say. Rain. Stop. Play. <laughs> <laughs> Along to love good circus, then on the feet. My lot of street, that's if there ain't a fog to irk us. Down in the strand, isn't it grand? Looking to where Trafalgar Square is, into the park, there's even a lock as high as my dream above. Clippity cloppity, clippity cloppity, London is my first love. Into the park, there's even a lock as high as my dream above. Just keep turning to the right Though your goal is out of sight Don't heed people who'll advise you If you're wise, you'll simply just keep turning to the right Don't try veering to the left You may find yourself bereft Of a sense of world importance And you oughtn't, so you must keep turning to the right This is the call all and all in shoulder, arms to victory. Follow the flag, pick up a bag and drag your weary bodies after me. Best foot forward, chin up high. Last man, close the gate and wide. We don't want the cars to trail us. If you fail us, you'll invite a comment impolite. I see you stand. Like greyhounds in the strips cry, we're for Harris, yes, by George, until you bust, but first you must keep turning to the right. You ought to have seen the one that got away. He was six feet four, wider than our church door. I mean to stick to Fred forever and a day, but you ought to have seen the one that got away. Bashed poor Fred, broke a magnum on his head. Now I don't think that he'll ever get away. No, no I don't think that he'll ever get away. Three men in a boat up the river, we will go on a sailing spree where the wind is free. If we get no wind, we'll have to row. Three men in a boat in the sky, our hearts remote. Like Columbus bowl in the days of old. If the crowd don't burn or overturn on three, three. men in a boat, 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 boat. Three men in a boat, and we must appreciate that the men are men. Back to nature then, with a knife and fork and spoon and plate. For three men in a boat, simple fare will serve afloat. Highland beef to start, and some apple tart. And a pint or two of ale will do for three men in a boat. In a boat, in a boat, in a what? In a what? In a boat, 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 Oh, all right, then three men and you. In a boat. You just heard a new musical adaptation of Jerome K. Jerome's Three Men in a Boat. The script, music and lyrics were by Hubert Gregg, who also played Jay. Kenneth Horne was Harris, and Leslie Phillips was George. In the melee at Waterloo Station and amazed at Hampton Court, you heard Fred Yule, Arthur Howard, Louis Stringer, John Badley, Arthur Gomez, Anthony Hall, Michael Deacon, Barbara Mitchell, Elizabeth Morgan, Dorrit Wells and Peggy Butt. The ladies who saw George off at Chertsey were Joan Brown, Dorothy Dorrow, Gillian Gray and Sylvia King. 
The landlord who didn't catch the trout was Fred Yule again, to say nothing of Percy Edwards, who was Montmorency. The music was played by the BBC Review Orchestra, leader Julian Gaillard, conductor Malcolm Lockyer, and sung by the Cliff Adams Callers, directed by Cliff Adams. The musical arrangements were by Ray Terry, and Three Men in a Boat was produced by Mark White.